my people. The clips you guys just saw was footage of my business partner and I all the way up in Darlington scoping out a buy, refurbish, refinance, rent deal. Now to save both of us some time, from this point onwards, I'm gonna be referring to buy, refurbish, refinance, rent as BRRRR, just so it's easy. So anybody that's interested in property investments will know that BRRRR has been a very, very popular investment strategy. The reason why it's a popular investment strategy is because in theory, it allows you to buy property below market value, you then refurbish it and force the appreciation in the property so much so that when you refinance it at the new value, you get to pull out all of the money that you invested. Again, in theory. And theory is what we're going to discuss in this video today. Don't worry, because I'm actually in the process of carrying out these projects in practice. But before I show you guys that, anybody who's a property investor or an aspiring property investor will understand the need to understand the theory. I'll tell you guys the theory and it's up to you guys to make a decision for yourselves whether it suits you or not. At the end of this video, I'll also give my reviews. I actually learned about this strategy of a popular property investor called Samuel Leeds. Now, I don't know Samuel Leeds and I don't have any opinion of him, but you see me, I'm an analytical man, yeah? I love numbers, yeah? And numbers have no agenda and numbers have no opinion. So today, we're going to be discussing the numbers. So strap in tight, let's do some B triple R. Now, generally speaking, your everyday buy to let investor that isn't cash rich, just works a standard nine to five, earning a modest salary, like myself, will probably have to buy one property, then you save your salary, you save the rent that you get from the property, and then hopefully you might get out some equity, and that's what you use to buy the next property. The issue is, it's the time taken. I mean, if you don't have a property that you can put equity out of, it's gonna take significantly longer. We're talking anything from two to seven years, depending on how much you can save. Everybody's scenario is different. Now the appeal of BRRR is that you save that deposit once and you keep recycling it over and over and over again. The idea is that you put X amount into a property, you force the appreciation, then you pull out the equity, which is the X amount that you initially put in. The good thing is, is that you've still got that property there and you can now rent that out and enjoy the rent on that. Now you take that X amount that you pulled out, you do the same thing again. You could do that for 10 properties. In theory, you could do it for an unlimited amount of properties. Forcing the appreciation and getting it valued at a certain amount is probably the most important part of BRRRR. Most people do this via refurbishment, which is the first R in BRRRR. However, it's not always done via refurbishment. For example, my cousin and his wife are very experienced with property law. Now they find a property that was priced very low and that's specifically because the lease was coming to an end. Now they managed to extend that lease and that's how they forced the appreciation in the property. The bulk of the appreciation has actually come from extending that lease because most everyday people would shy away from a lease that was so short. So without further ado, let's get into some numbers. Remember, this is all theory. I'm going to give my review at the end and watch out for the second video where I'm going to do it myself. Right, so I thought you guys deserved a change of scenery, which is why I brought the whiteboard out. It allows me to do some visuals as well. So before we get started, let me get ahead of it and say that my drawings and my handwriting are terrible. So I don't want to hear nothing on that. And these houses go up in size. That has no representation of what I'm trying to show you guys here today. I will write numbers if one is higher in value. So the first letter in the acronym is B for buy. Now, as mentioned before, you want to buy something where you can force appreciation. So when you're looking for these properties, you're not looking for something that's done up well. You're actually looking for something that's run down a bit. Maybe a crackhead's lived in there for about six to 12 months. But one thing you don't compromise on ever is location. Like they say in property, particularly in refurbs, you want the worst house on the best road. Now, it doesn't always work out that simply, but here, is the worst house, or let's just say this is a good road. For the purposes of this example, we're gonna assume that we know the sold house price value of all of the properties on this road, and all properties sold within the last year, which gives you very reliable data. That is a very unlikely scenario, but remember this video is about theory and how the numbers work behind BRRRR. However, I must add, when doing a real BRRRR, it's so important to assess house values and you need to know how to do that. One of the best ways to do that is get a long list of comparables. This is of houses that are currently on the market, which is less reliable, and houses that are sold on the market recently, which is very reliable. This is generally the information that surveyors will base their valuation on. And this will allow you to know what the house could potentially be valued at once you've forced your appreciation. 
I actually have a specific Excel workbook that's specific for BRRR that allows you to put in all of your comparables where you compare the local property prices, let's say within half a mile or a mile, and it shows you the variances so you know whether your projected house value is realistic or not. Anyways, here's our road and we know the house value of all of the houses on the road, so let me run you through it. So let's start off with this green one. This represents a house that's in good condition. It might have had a refurb in the last year or two, let's just say. And that house is actually currently worth 95,000. If we skip down to the orange one, this is a house that's quite dated. It hasn't been refurbed or updated in let's just say 20 years. So it's not as run down as the house that we're looking for or looking at, but it's in a bad state anyway. And that house is actually worth 80,000. All of the rest of the houses, so these two here, and these three here are just gonna be the standard house price on the road, which is 90,000. So generally speaking, houses on this road go for 90,000, one in good condition goes for 95,000, and one in, let's just say, dated condition goes for about 80,000. But what have we here? Let's look at our property. Our property is run down. This represents the run down. It's in a very, very bad state. Perfect for B Triple R. And this house is actually on the market for 70,000 pounds. So it's lower than all of the houses on the road. Now, one of the key things for B Triple R is getting a house below market value. There's a number of ways to do this, which I won't cover in this video, but let's just say in this instance, you managed to get that house down from 70,000 to 60,000. Right, so we've bought the house for 60,000 as you can see. Now, generally speaking, when buying a buy to let property, they want you to put down a 25% deposit. In this case, that would amount to 15,000, which obviously would mean that you've got a mortgage of 75,000, so your mortgage outstanding will be 45,000. I hope you're following me. If you are, hit that like button. Hey, got you. Already, smash that like button. I'll go on then. So now that we've put down a deposit, we can start talking costs. So, you put down a deposit of 15,000. We've bought up north, so we're only buying a property for 60k, so the stamp duty is very low, even for an investor, at 1,800. Let's just assume solicitor's fees of about 1,200, so we can keep it nice and round. Then moving on to cost of finance. Cost of finance opens a whole new question. Now I told you that I decided to do this project based on Samuel Lee's video. I think Samuel Lee's just put down a ton of cash, he's a multi-millionaire, and he just makes it a lot easier. But the everyday person like you and I, we're gonna have to finance it somehow. There's plenty of ways to finance it. The most popular way that real investors use is bridging finance. Bridging finance itself demands a whole new video, so I might do a video on that, but there's loads of content on bridging finance. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be talking about financing it through your typical buy to let mortgage. However, it can be done through bridging finance, it can be done through personal loans. It could even be done through credit cards if your balance is high enough. I mean, these properties, you might need to borrow 45,000, so you could even do it on credit cards. Anyways, I've done a rough calculation on an interest-only mortgage of 45,000 pounds at 1.8%, and that came up to 67 pounds per month. Crazy, crazy. Mate, you could pick up a paper round and pay off that mortgage. That's just insane to me. But that's what we get when we invest up north. And the good thing is, is that we're improving the properties up there while doing these B Triple R projects as well. Let's put the mortgage amount of £67 per month here because we will need it later when we're discussing the rent. Now the idea with B Triple R is to get in and out of the project as quickly as possible. People hope to do it within six months, but let's just say that it takes us 12 months. So 12 months times £67 per month is 804. To keep the numbers round, let's just assume that it's £800 instead of 804 and let's add that to the total costs. Finally, we may be charged some fees somewhere. There may be some fees that we can't actually add onto the mortgage. So let's just assume another 1,000 pounds worth of fees and add that onto our total costs. Now the final cost, the R in B triple R, refurb. Now with the refurb, you have to select properly. You have to pick something that isn't gonna cost that much, but it's gonna pump the house value significantly. Stuff like painting and carpet is a perfect place to start, but oftentimes it's not enough. You wanna do stuff like revamp the kitchen, or make an open plan kitchen and living room, or add a bathroom, or add an ensuite, or even rectify an issue. The reason that the house was priced low may be like a roofing issue, but you're a roofing expert, or you've got a roofing expert and you've gone there and you fixed it and that will then force the appreciation on the house. 
Anyways, in Samuel Lee's video, he got the house painted, carpeted, new bathroom, new kitchen, and it cost him £6,000. Now, I've been up north, and these prices are actually realistic. I thought it was waffle. It's actually realistic. So I'm gonna put down a refer price of 10,000, and I'll tell you that 10,000 is higher than anything that I've ever been quoted up north. Now, all of this gives us total cost of 29,800. This is the cash that we've put in. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna make this 30,000, just to make it simpler, make it easier to deal with. Now, the refurb is complete. Now, you can argue the property looks worse than the rest of the road, but like I mentioned, I'm not the best at drawing. So the theory is, is that six months later, when the work is completed, a surveyor comes round, they have a look at the work that you've done and say, yeah, do you know what? This property is fantastic. It's actually currently the best on the road. And the previous best on the road was this greenhouse, which is at 95,000, as mentioned before. He's gonna say, nah, forget the 95,000. Your house is worth 100,000. Crazy. That's the theory. So now we've got a 100K house. But bear in mind, we still have a 45K mortgage on it. But the house price has gone up so much that now the mortgage represents less than half of the full property value. Now, if you don't understand how equity works, make sure you check my videos, what is equity? Now, if your maths isn't that great, I'll help you out here. The current mortgage of 45,000 only represents 45% of the full house value. Now, as we know, lenders for a buy to let are quite happy to lend up to 75%. And again, if your maths ain't that great, 75% of a 100K property is 75,000. Now this is where the second R, refinance, comes in. So if you don't know how to pull equity out of a property, I made another video which is also on the What is Equity series where I'll tell you how to pull equity out of your property. But essentially, if we can refinance for 75,000 and our current mortgage is 45,000, we're pulling 30K out of the property. Now again, for those that don't understand, this is 30,000, tangible money. They will put it in your current account. So in theory, we managed to pull out £30,000 equity. Now, if you haven't clocked already, £30,000 is how much cash we put into the project in total. So essentially, we pulled out every dime, the refurb, the legal costs, the financing costs, we pulled out every single dime we spent out of that property again. But the great thing is, we still own the property. And the idea is that you can now take this 30000 and do exactly the same thing again and again. And again, I mean, B triple R projects can take anything from six months to 12 months to 18 months. But the idea is that at some point, you might have two going on in a year. Then you'll have three going on in a year. And every time you're pulling out equity, you're slapping it back into another one. And then you can just own loads and loads and loads and loads more houses. But remember, this is theory. Now the final R in B triple R is for rent. Now in this instance, I'm not gonna discuss how much rent you'll get, when I show you my practical example, when I went up north, I will tell you everything, how much rent. For this example, I'm not going to, but we know that the mortgage is 67 pounds per month. Mate, that's like a phone bill. It's not gonna to be tough to find a tenant that can pay that mortgage and put some money in your pocket as well. But let's move on and let's go to my review of B Triple R. Finally guys, before I conclude and then show you the video of me going up north and doing a B Triple R in practice, it's time I give you my review on the theory I just explained. Let's start off with buy. Buying, and buying below market value. To make it possible to get out all of your money, we had to buy below market value, and we did so by 10,000 pounds. Now, getting a property below market value is definitely possible, but it's not as easy as people make it sound. In this scenario, we needed to get the property 10,000 pounds below market value to even make it possible to get out all of our money. Now that £10,000 reduction, percentage-wise, represents a great reduction in price. Now this isn't me saying it's impossible, but I'd say that it definitely isn't your everyday scenario. What is probably more likely is reductions of about £3,000, £4,000, or in some cases you may not even be able to get any reduction whatsoever. Next, moving on to the second R, refurbish. Now this can mean any kind of method you choose to force the appreciation. Now in this scenario, you can either take the price that we bought the house at 60 k or the price it was initially on the market for, 70k. But all we know is that we got that up to 100,000, which is 30 or 40k, whichever way you look at it, appreciation. 
Now this is a great amount of appreciation. And it's fair to say in some cases, you might not be able to achieve that much appreciation. You have to do a very good job to be able to convince a surveyor that you managed to add 40,000 pounds worth of value in six months. It also depends on how you're forcing this appreciation. You may be buying a property off a vendor who, for example, has got the property back off of a tenant and when they've got a property back, the house is full of damp. Now your everyday person, when they see damp, they dread the sight of it. Now in this scenario, you might be a damp expert or you may be coming with a damp expert and it may create a scenario where the everyday person is like, oh, that is horrid, forcing the house value down. However, you're the damp expert or you're with a damp expert and they're like, do you know what? This isn't actually so bad. I'm just gonna ch -ch 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 sort it. Now these scenarios where somebody hates something and you've got the direct solution are the perfect scenarios where you're gonna force that appreciation up. Needless to say, it's not gonna take a lick of paint. You're gonna have to do real work to add real value to the property. Now as an overview, my full overview of BRRR is that it is a great investment strategy. However, Contrary to what Samuel Leeds said, I don't think that you'll take out all of your money. I don't think that everything can go so right all of the time that you pull out all of your money. However, I'm an investor who has at times had to save, rent out the property and pull out equity to buy a further property. Now in this scenario, even if I can get out 50% or 60% of my money, that is fantastic. And that is what I will be aiming for when I do my BRRR projects. Now I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please hit that like button below and once this video hits 100 likes, which I know is ambitious, I'm going to release the next video of me actually going up north with my business partner, looking at properties, getting an offer accepted, getting builders and starting our own BRRR project. I've already got the majority of everything recorded, so once it hits 100 likes, I will be releasing that video and you guys can see and learn with me because I don't know how this is going to turn out. So you'll be learning with me and you get to experience with me a BRRR project from start till finish and it's going to be a complete replica of what Samuel Leeds did. Once again, if you did enjoy this video, hit that like button, hit that share button and thank you once again for tuning in to Bricks With Tips. I guess we can call it a wrap.